my favorite thing about SmackDown is every single episode, Michael Cole is totally surprised that it's sponsored by Progressive. He's like, oh, hey, car insurance, wow. Also, hello, my friends, and welcome to Ups and Downs, the show where I review wrestling. And today, obviously, we are going to focus on SmackDown. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler. By the time you get to the main event, you better have a tissue ready because water gonna come out of your eyes. Don't worry about car insurance either because Cody Rhodes came to the ring to kick off this week's episode of Smacker Down. The fans went crazy and the absolute best bit is when we get to his theme song and everyone goes, whoa! I mean, it's getting louder every week. He also said that he thinks Roman Reigns is the best champion in sports and sports entertainment. I've been thinking about that all morning and no, it doesn't make any sense, but actually he's not here to address the tribal chief because he wants to talk to Kevin Owens. Huh. Now, as he has said his name, KO did appear. That's just what happens with wrestlers. But before they could get into it, the American Nightmare was like, ha ha, there's an extra individual we also need out here. <laughs> he called out Sami Zayn. And honestly, that's why I'm wearing this T-shirt today, warm and fuzzy in my tum-tum, because I could feel it firing up. I mean, I had all the emotions here, including greed, which doesn't make any sense. Is that even an emotion? I don't know. When Cody was like, listen, Kevin Owens, I'm going to pull back the curtain here. I have all the love and respect for you in the world. Because when I left WWE years ago, I didn't know what I was doing. But you introduced me to some friends which set me on the path. And yes, just in case you don't know, he was referring to the Young Bucks. Do the dance of joy. The point is, Rhodes now wants to return the favour or get him back together with Sami Zayn. When KO was like, I'll be done. <laughs> I've already talked to you about this. I'm not interested. Would you leave me alone? Sammy was totally baffled because since day one, whether they've been falling out or whether they've been hugging, keep that in your brain, they've always found a way to sort of stand together. So now what's the deal? What's the problem? If they come together, they can defeat the bloodline, which right now is the most important thing in the world. The fans were then chanting, hug it out again, because of course they knew when Owens all of a sudden went all Professor Layton, because he said something like, why would I fight someone who doesn't even want to be my friend? And then he walked off. Huh? This then led to the back, though, when Owens was about to leave in a car and Sami Zayn called him and said, forget everything I said in the ring. I just love you. You're my best friend. It's so hard to find a friend in this world. So let's just get back together and then we can go out for dinner. Do you know what, know what Kev did? He just drove off. Although he definitely didn't make the sound effect of a car noise. So WWE is just drama now and great drama at that. And again, we do get the payoff on this SmackDown. I don't think I'm ever going to get over it. Up. Which is when we had a mixed tag team match. I wasn't ready. But it was the Judgment Day versus Legada El Fantasma or Rhea Ripley and Dominic versus Santos Escobar and Zelina Vega. So somebody must have called up WWE and said, listen, we need to make that bald a-hole feel good in his tum-tum because maybe Rhea and Dominic have teamed together before and I just totally forgot. But the fact I got to see it again, somebody give them some kind of a prize. Tommy Boy just drop kicked Santos Escobar as soon as it started too when Rhea Ripley tagged in and she was about to do the same. When all of a sudden, Zelina Vega flew in, and I tell you, throughout this match, she was going properly crazy. And it kind of felt like we were trying to light a fire under her ass. She also hit a moonsault to the floor, and I was like, well, your namesake in Street Fighter does that. And I probably just totally made that up, but I don't care. We then cut to the commercial, and when we did come back, the Judgment Day <laughs> were just in control. And nobody told us why, so as always, I've made it up. And I bet Rhea said to Zelina, oh man, you like Street Fighter, do you? Well, I think Tekken is better. Vega's like, I can't believe you said that. And then Rhea murked her. Also, I want to make it very clear. That's not true. Street Fighter is the best. It also meant that Rhea started using Dominic as a weapon. I was like, I cannot believe these two keep getting better every single week. When all of a sudden, Dobby Boy and Sarah Escobar went crashing into each other. WWE loves that spot these days. But to be fair, so do I. It really did feel like we were trying to re-establish Vega here because she was able to hit a TOL DDT and she had the three count. And do you know who broke this up? <laughs> it was Dominic Mysterio. And everybody booed him. This was like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn to me. I was like, Dom, please be my friend. We then got the Tower of Doom spot because why not when Zelina Vega hit the Hurricane Rana on Dominic to a big old evasion. But of course, that's when Ripley was like, hey, you're not going to focus on me. She hit the Riptide and she won. And this is what we should be doing throughout 2023. If Rhea Ripley is involved with any kind of a match, she is victorious. Of course, Dominic got right on the mic afterwards and said, that daddy Mysterio, what an idiot. When Ray did come to the ring, but that then became a segment all of its own, so we'll get to it. But in terms of this match, it was fun up. Now, Ray was being all nice father here to begin with. He was like, Rhea, please leave me alone. I need to talk to my son. When he was like, yeah, look, this is a selfish business 
and I probably wasn't there for you as much as I should have done when you were a child. Wow. He did miss birthdays and he did miss important events, but it didn't mean that he didn't love Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> it's like, honestly, this episode of SmackDown brought to you by emotion. He then made it very clear that everything he's ever done was for his family. And also, Dom, let's not pretend that you didn't use the Mysterio name to your advantage. How many times did you get in trouble and then was all like, oh, I'm Mysterio, and all of a sudden you were free again? I mean, that's also the reason he's a WWE superstar. Now, don't get me wrong, if Rey Mysterio was my dad, I'd be like, listen, pups, I want to be a superstar. And then I'd be a superstar. Rey then got super sad 9,000 that Dom probably wasn't going to be at the Hall of Fame when he just turned on a dime. I was like, but I will say this, if any other punk kid was calling me out for WrestleMania, I would absolutely kick their ass. I mean, this was like he'd been possessed by Gozar or something. This is still his boy, though, because he's not going to do it, because that would make him the worst dad ever when he turned around and walked away. As Dom was all like, ah, ha, 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 you're such a buffoon, dad. Don't forget I hate you. Honestly, though, Rey Mysterio will eventually snap. Dominic will do something that he can't forgive, and we will have this match. I'm just going to have the best old time. The amount of stories that are shooting into my face right now, which sounds weird, point is up. And then we had a Mania showcase match. What? Thankfully, Wade Barrett was on hand to explain this. And we are going to have two fatal four ways at the Colossal Tussle. One for the men's and one for the women's. But for no reason whatsoever, you have to qualify. And why would any wrestler be bothered? I mean, I get it. You want to be on WrestleMania. It's like the coolest thing of the year. But otherwise, you fighting for nothing. Anyway, it was Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez taking on Emma and Tegan Knox, who I thought had a broken arm, but apparently not. And it went three minutes, and Raquel and Liv just won. The finish came when Raquel Rodriguez hit the big powerbomb on Emma, and then Liv Morgan came on with the Oblivion. And that's it. They're now going to WrestleMania with two other people. This was totally, woefully bizarre. And I think my big thing is that you could have done a badass feud between Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez, especially because Liv has been crazy recently. Maybe we could have turned her mega heel. Though actually, I would have made Raquel the bad guy because he's all big and scary and all of that. But this kind of just went over my bald head. It felt totally pointless. I don't understand. Damn. I'm not going to lie either. When we did all of this stuff with Rhea Ripley earlier in the day, I was like, does that mean we're not going to focus on the Charlotte Flair feud? Because we probably should... Thankfully, I was totally wrong. And yes, look, everybody's going crazy right now because the rumor mill suggests that it is going to be Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley for the main event of WrestleMania Night 1, when maybe, just maybe, it should be Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn taking on the Usos. But man, who cares? Go and get an actual problem if this is what you're struggling with. I probably agree that the tag team match has more kudos, but is there anything wrong with a women's championship match closing night one, especially if Rhea Ripley is there holding the championship, which we all want? I say no. Bear also had a pretty good line here because he was all like, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Because years ago, we had a flair as the champion as a Rhodes tried to become the champion. And at WrestleMania 39, same thing is happening. It's true. She then turned to Rhea Ripley and said, if you want to get to this level, you're going to have to beat me because I'm a star. And apparently the way wrestling works when it comes to the mess is that if you're not a star, you beat a star and then you become a star. Ugh. It doesn't matter though, because the result is going to be the same as it was three years ago. And I swear, if that happens and Charlotte Flair wins, I am going to go absolutely crazy on Twitter. This is when Rhea had heard enough and she came to the ring with Dominic Mysterio. And she was all like, listen, everybody fears me. I'm a scary person apart from you. But that doesn't mean anything to the Nightmare because she doesn't just want to become the SmackDown Women's Champion. She needs to become the SmackDown Women's Champion. So I can only presume a doctor has told her, if you don't win this title, you're going to die. The whole point is, though, is when she is victorious, Charlotte will understand why she should fear her. This is where Dominic just zoomed in and got in Charlotte's face. And I tell you, Rhea Ripley should win at WrestleMania 39, obviously. And the next feud, being serious, should be Charlotte Flair versus Dominic. This was, of course, a ruse so Ripley could jump Charlotte. And then we got into this massive brawl. And look, yes, WWE loves doing these. It's their go-to. But actually, they were really kicking each other's ass. And even though a bunch of security and a bunch of referees came out there to try and stop them, one dude just went flying over Barry Barricade because these two gone crazy. Somebody else went into Alan the announce table as all our wrestling fans were getting murked. But this is what you have to do to set the scene, especially if we are going to have it as the main event of WrestleMania Night 1. But I'm looking forward to it because it's one of those matches where as long as you get the winner right, boring, boring, keep saying the same thing, then there won't be any problem. Does mean if we get the winner wrong, we're going to have to have a big conversation and probably do a video about it. But in terms of what we had to do, up. Quick interview with Sami Zayn because he is going to confront Jay Uso later because apparently phones don't exist. 
And this performance was just terrific because he was basically like, man, Kevin Owens is never going to be my friend. Why won't Kevin Owens be my friend? And all of a sudden, it was time for Xavier Woods versus LA Knight. As it turns out, this was set up because LA Knight had watched Xavier Woods playing a video game. He was like, man, you're such a loser. And I kind of think we were meant to do something between LA Knight and the New Day at WrestleMania. But given that Kofi Kingston has very sadly got injured and needs surgery, so all the positive love to that man, maybe we're calling an audible. We absolutely do have something with Lar as well, because he is just getting bigger and bigger reactions every single week. But here... <laughs> This went like three minutes, went from nowhere, Woods hit the most devastating move in all oh, sports entertainment. The surprise roll up and he got the win. And I can't lie to you, I mean, why would you want a waste of time on both of our behalves? I know how Woods feels about this maneuver, so the fact that sometimes he wins with it is great. There's also more to this later because LA Knight found Rey Mysterio in the pack and he walked up to him and said, listen man, I need to be on WrestleMania, so if you need somebody to beat up your son, I'll do it. This is the greatest request ever. Ray slapped Knight because of course he did. You can't go and say that to a father. But maybe this is all going to connect and come together somehow. But given that I had no expectations for this, I did find myself being entertained. Also, bring down the surprise roll-up board. It goes up by one. My word, do we enjoy doing this? Give it enough. And then WWE did what WWE should have done. Good. Because it was Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre to see who was going to face Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania 39. And they just beat the piss out of each other. I mean, not literally, because I've never watched wrestling again. But if you had never watched wrestling before, and this was your first match ever, and someone said, oh, it's all predetermined, you'd be like, don't lie to me. I just watched this war. They also both point at the WrestleMania sign, because that just happens at this time of year. The gravitational pull goes crazy. I mean, watch, you can't help it. As soon as it is a WrestleMania sign, you can't pull your hand away. And then they just started <laughs> punching each other in the face. I mean, that's what they did. They took their face and they saw the other person's skull, and they just went smack. They also hit this massive superplex, and I was like, oh man, I only just realized this is big men slapping man meat, when Drew McIntyre hit a neck breaker. So even though Sheamus is meant to be his bro, he was trying to break his neck. He then went for the Claymore kick, but the Irishman cut him off with this horrible looking knee to the face for a near fall. And at this point, if you listened, the fans were going, this is awesome, mostly because it was. The absolute highlight though, is that they did both go for their finishes, which is basically the same move now I think about it, and they collided in the middle of the ring. So I told you WWE loves doing that, but they were both down, so the ref was like, well, I know the rules, I know how it works, I gotta start counting. Unlike some episode of Sesame Street though, Imperium, who had been at ringside the whole time, got in the ring with Gunther going, Van of you must win, come on, I need to know who my opponent is. So his plan was to tell Ludwig and Giovanni, we'll just beat these two up. So the referee went, well, that was dumb. Now I've got to disqualify all of this. When Adam Pearce came on the screen and went, yeah, that was dumb. Now we're going to do the one thing you don't want, Gunther, the triple threat. I, however, was having a great time because there is so much good that could come from this. I mean, you could even have Drew McIntyre pin Sheamus to become the Intercontinental Champion. You then do that feud when you really heat up Gunther and he goes after the brand new WWE Champion, Cody Rhodes. I would not mind that at all. All of this was great. Up. And thank goodness we didn't have this for our main event because we had our go home closing angle. And again, look at the damn t shirt. This is what was going on. For it was the face off between Sami Zayn and Jay Uso. And the first thing Jay said was, Man, I never trusted you. I knew deep down you were a horrible person. I was like, Jay, man, you lying. He did admit that slowly he won the entire bloodline over, though. But as soon as this did happen and Jay Uso was like, I love you, Sami Zayn, what did Sam do? He turned his back. And now he'll never forgive him. Because he made him look like a fool. <laughs> Jay also said something like, you nothing but a fake ass oose. So I'm going to use this in my real life. If someone ever says anything bad to me, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, well, you a fake ass oose. The real beauty of all of this though was Zayn's reaction because he basically called Jay Uso's bluff. And he's like, you're not mad at me. You're mad at Roman Reigns because that guy manipulates you all of the time. Hence why when we got to the Royal Rumble and you had that chair and you could have smacked him in the back and you didn't do it, now you're filled with regret because you know you're going to be stuck under his thumb forever. So this is why he's a grumpy Groot's Graham because he has been totally gaslit by this man. Honestly, the layers of depth here is like an onion. When, of course, they did start the fight because Jay Uso's brain couldn't handle this, mostly because it was going, he's right, you know, he's 100% right. And just when it looked like Sam was going to get the upper hand, not only did Jimmy Uso turn up, but they took Simp of the Still Steps and they slammed it right into his head. I was like, that's attempted murder. This, however, 
is when Kevin Owens' music hit to a massive reaction. And I bought in so much, I was like, oh my gosh, I thought he got home. He ran wild on the Usos, hitting cover up power bombs and stunners, but don't worry about any of that, because when they were thrown from the ring, Kevin Owens looked at Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn looked at Kevin Owens, and they came together and they hugged. And you need to see this for the reaction alone. I know I keep going on about it, but this is what was happening, and I was just crying all over the place. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. We then saw Cody smiling from the back as well, and we should now take Rhodes and just inject him into all feuds. Obviously, he did it here. He should go talk to Rey Mysterio and go, listen, man, you should go beat your kid's ass. He can then explain to Edge why he must kill Finn Balor in the Hell in the Cell, and he can go to Gunther, Drew, and Sheamus to remind them about Big Men slapping man me. Usos, KO and Sami Zayn then all finish SmackDown by staring off at each other. So of course we're going to do the tag team match at WrestleMania. And this just goes to show sometimes the most obvious and the most expected thing is exactly what we should do. Pull the trigger. And this just isn't getting an up. It's getting a golden up. Be still my beating heart. So as I always say when it comes to SmackDown, this is the show you need to watch if you want to get pumped for WrestleMania. I love this so much. It does hurt giving it an up. Now please do click one of the videos on the screen and make sure to watch Ups and Downs for Rampage later, otherwise I'm wasting my life. Like the video, share the video and subscribe. My name is Simon for What Culture. Thank you very much for joining me as always. Who is pumped for WrestleMania? I am. See you soon.